Good morning and welcome to Get the Word in Your Face International. This is Pastor Cheryl Jackson coming to you with a word from the Lord. May God be praised. It is a new day. It is a day where His grace is right here and right now. His mercy endure forever. God is good and He is perfect in all of His ways. You know, when I when I think about how great the Lord is, I, I just stand still. It's like you just you you just in awe. You just like wow. Your heart gives way to the sound of His voice, and you begin to wait just to just to hear Him. And it's a spiritual wait, people. It's not a physical wait where you you stop. You're here. You stop everything around you. But it, yet it is. I wish I could help you understand what it is to hear the sound of his voice or to know, just to know in your heart that he's present right here with you right now. That he is the God who said he would never leave you nor forsake you and he has stuck to his word. That even though our situations and circumstances surround us and tell us that, you know, is all about that situation, it's all about these circumstances, and it's always being thrown in our face. I'm going to say it just like this, the devil is a liar. God is exalted. He has crowned us with loving kindness and tender mercies. Do you know what that really means? Do you know and understand what that implies? That he's greater than your circumstance. There's no situation in this life that can overcome God. I was reading in John chapter 1. It says in the beginning, there was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning, and all things were made by Him, and nothing was made without Him. In Him was life, and that life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overpowered it. The darkness has not overpowered it. We, we tend to look at the situations and circumstances of life, and we can't see the spiritual things anymore. We're, we're using our feelings and we're discerning with our own thoughts to make things be what, what we want them and we desire them to be. And we lose sight of the one who has crowned us with loving kindness and his tender mercies. He's given us a grace where we can come boldly to his throne and ask for what we have need of, and it will happen. Jesus says that if we seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, that those things that we have need of would be taken care of. The answers that you need, you know, what... You know, I'm not going to talk about the worst of the situations because it's always something coming to the thoughts of our mind trying to distract us from who God is. When light comes into the room, it overpowers darkness. You can try it yourself. You can turn off all the lights in a room, shut all the drapes, and light a match. And tell me what happens. Tell me what happens. This is the light that comes to every man. This is the light that Jesus is. This is the light that Jesus is. He is the living word of God. I saw Jesus as the, you know, when, when it says that in the beginning there was the word. That's Jesus. The word was with God. That's in him. That's in God. The word was in God. And the word was God. You see, Jesus Christ is the express image of his person. He is that person. Oh. Okay, let me finish. He was with God in the beginning. And all things were made by him. And nothing was made without him. Do you understand that the worlds were created by God, right? Do you understand that it says that in Hebrews 
chapter 11, verse 3, that the word, the worlds were framed by the word of God. The Lord God, when he, the father of heaven and earth, when he spoke his word, when he had the thought that I will make, I, I will create a son, I will have a son that will deliver humanity, that will break the chains of darkness, will break the grip of Satan, that they will no longer have to obey him. When they hear the sound of Satan's voice, they can run from him if they trust me. Now, I'm going to make it so that they don't have to be ruled over by him. It's their choice of who they'll be ruled by. They can be ruled by my son, or they can be ruled by Satan. And they'll get the punishment that Satan has. God has delivered us from the rules of this flesh. We don't have to give in to these thoughts to distract us from what God says. He said, I crowned you with loving kindness and tender mercies. I've made a way for you when it doesn't even seem to be a way. My peace is your way. And my way is through my son. So God takes, he, he speaks a word and encases it in flesh. His word. Who he is. God expressed who he is in Jesus Christ. He is the son of God. The living God. He is the one who comes into the earth and shows us exactly how God is. Our expectations are in him. Jesus told us everything that was good. <laughs> anyway. He spoke, repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. You could live in me. You have eternal life through me. You can live through me, and I will give you life and goodness. Now, I know, we face things every single day. You say, well, it doesn't seem to be good right now. But we face things all day long. But when we're in God and we face the, these dangers and we have these situations and circumstances, they don't overpower us. We speak the authority that our Father has put in us through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He reminds us of the word of truth and the light that he's put inside of us when we receive Christ lights up the room. The enemy cannot stand before you. Now he might come and it look like the door is closed, but you have to be persistent with the word of faith. I believe what God said. And God said that there is nothing too hard for him. Nothing impossible for God. Nothing is impossible for him. And I have the strength. I have strength through Jesus Christ to resist the enemy. I have strength through Jesus Christ to do all things that need to be done for his name's sake. He is God, no matter what this thing look, look, looks like. Now, the only thing that we have to kind of figure out by, by coming to him and listening for the sign of his voice, being still before God, I want to say. Is this a situation allowed by God? Or is this situation something that is just coming at me? Now, with everything that comes, I believe that God's working it out for our good, regardless of what it looks like. There's something about it that God's working out in us, in our nature, in our character, killing that old man. You know, behold, old, old things have passed away, all things have become new. Is not like an instantaneous idea in our minds. Because we are constantly being renewed day by day. We're growing from grace to grace, uh, or is it from glory to glory to glory, every single day. New mercies. This, uh, there's a song, New Mercies I See. Every, I mean, every single day is a new day. And God's mercy is right there to meet you in that day. Wisdom and knowledge is there. Peace and love, a love that casts out fear. But we have to remind ourselves that God loves me. 
I'm in him and he's in me. And we have to proclaim what we believe. We're so busy proclaiming the situation and proclaiming, proclaiming meaning we're saying the situation, we're talking about the problems and the circumstances and the situations rather than seeking the kingdom of God and God's way of doing things. When Jesus come, comes into this life, he says, he says, seek ye first. No, he says, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. And he shows us, he shows us how good God's way of living is. He speaks about it. And even though he's going through these things, and we talk more about how the Pharisees and all those who were against him came at him. And how they tried to argue their point with him. Rather than seeing what Jesus was talking about and how he actually lived it out. See, when Jesus spoke to the winds and the waves, they did what he told them to do. He said, be calm, be still, and they shut up. The Pharisees, when they tried to reach out their hands to snatch him, they couldn't find him because it wasn't his time yet. When He, he looked at that, that little girl who, who they said was dead. He said, she's only sleeping. Wake up, arise. He told Lazarus, get up. He told the, the blind man, <laughs> you know, he, he looked at him and he gave him his sight. Then he turns around and he cleanses the leper who says, wilt thou make me clean? If you would, you could make me clean. He said, I would. And he does it. And Jesus says, would you believe by the miracles that I've done? But in this day and age, we haven't seen his miracles. We haven't seen such a great outpouring of this faith that cast out devils, that heals the sick. Because we don't believe that the true light is the light that, that has entered man. This, this light causes things to happen. It causes things to be because we're too busy looking at the situations we're too busy feeling the circumstances god is more than all of it god's weight i mean god's word carries more weight than your situation god's word carries more weight than your situation it, and yet and yet it's light as a feather it's light l-i-t-e as a feather jesus says my yoke is easy my burden is light he's coming to give rest for your soul so therefore I'm telling you you should be content in him because he's your all in all you want to drink him you want to eat him you want your mouth satisfied with who he is because you know that his his word his word is light and that light lights everything it can what did it say again John chapter 1 Verse 5, the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overpowered it. Overpowered it. Therefore, there is no confusion, <laughs> no dread, no fear, no doubt, no procrastination. Nothing can stand in God's presence. The only thing that you are to do is to bind from operation in the earth those things that are trying to govern you, those evil spirits that are trying to govern you. It's one thing for a man to make a decision on his own to do bad. But it's a whole other thing when you just keep listening to these voices that keep talking to you and keep talking to you and they are talking to you. You can say, well, no, I'm, I'm, I'm just so saintly that nothing ever bothers me. I don't ever hear nothing trying to... Well, because you figure that temptation is something that makes you feel it in your body parts. But no, not all temptation is a feeling inside your body. It's not always a sharp pain or some sexual thing. It's not always a taste for a beer or a cigarette. 
All sin starts with a thought. All sin starts with a thought. And that thought is rebellion against what God said. And rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. Listen. You have to bind these evil things that come up against the knowledge of God. And when you can do this, you can make a sound decision. But not, wait, wait, not just yet. Because after you bind, you have to loose. God says that I did not give you a spirit of fear, but of love. A spirit of fear unto bondage again. But he's given us his Holy Spirit who he, he speaks to our heart, reminds us of the word of truth, and we begin to call out, Father, 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 in the name of Jesus. Loose your peace. Your peace is loosed. Loose your, his peace, loose his joy, loose his love. Loose a sound mind, a clear mind. Loose it in Jesus' name by your Holy Spirit. Loose it. We bind every evil thing that is running through this earth, running through the heavens, and holding back my joy in the Father. The, my joy in the Holy Spirit. For your joy, Lord God, is my strength. So therefore I praise you. <laughs> I pray that you hear what I'm saying. Because this is your relationship with God. And it is your relationship with God is the number one. There isn't anything greater than your relationship with God, with the Lord. If you allow these words, these situations and circumstances in life to overpower you, you're actually allowing someone to come in and, and steal your crown. Now, I'm not going to go to all the scripture parts. You're supposed to be reading your word on your own. You read the word and you'll understand what I'm saying about your, your crown. You're supposed to guard these things and not let these things be taken away from you. You see, if you don't know what your crown is, then you don't know who you are in God. You are a royal, you are a royal priest. I mean, you have garments on that you can't even see. You belong to God and you can't see how... Holy he has made you, how he's cleansed you and put robes on you. Maybe your robes are blue and white. Maybe they're purple and maybe they're, they're green, full of God's glory. Can you see who you are in him? And exalt his name in every situation. Though the enemy comes in like a flood, he has lifted up a standard against them and that standard is in your mouth it is our inheritance to speak our uh, that authority into the earth so bring down every stronghold to bring down every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and then we get to a point where we're in where there's a readiness to revenge all disobedience when it comes up I like to think of it as stuffing a footstool for Christ Jesus we're stuffing the footstool of Christ making his enemies his footstool I think I'm walking to 1 Peter chapter 5. And I'm working out of the, uh, what is this one? The New Century Version Holy Bible Everyday Study Edition. First Peter chapter 5. Is it that one or First Peter chapter one? Yep, it's, it's First Peter chapter one. Starting in chapter one, verse five. It says, God's power protects you through your faith until salvation is shown to you at the end of time. This makes you very happy, even though now, for, for now, for a short time, different kinds of troubles may make you sad. 
These troubles come to prove that your faith is pure. The purity of faith is worth more than gold, which can be proved to be pure by fire, but will ruin. And, you know, it's interesting because when the situations get really hot, and I do mean hot because I've been in, I've been through one that was really so hot that I felt like I was in a fiery furnace and I was about to burn up and I'm like, Lord, if you don't do something now, you know, but we lose sight because we're telling him to do something that he's saying, be still and know that I am God. Trust me. You can trust me. Just come to me. Eat and drink this word. Peace be still. You know, and he's teaching you to, he's telling you to come and, and look into the word of truth so he can fill your mouth with the word and you'll begin to speak the authority that he shows you. But it's in his timing. See, the, the spirit of God is going to remind you of the truth. And you, you probably already read it. You probably already know it. But the Holy Spirit, when he speaks that word to your heart, it becomes a rhema word, a, a living word. It becomes light at that second, at that moment. And you speak what you hear your father say. And that's when that word goes to work. And it doesn't return void. It does exactly what God has purposed it to do. And the angels will go on that command. The angels won't move on flesh commands. They move on the command of God. So it has to be a rhema word, a word of life. That light that Jesus is. But we have to see the situation. I, I pray that you get these things faster than I have gotten them. But whatever situation you're facing today, tomorrow, next week, whenever it comes, because there's going to be stuff in this world. Get into the word. Seek the Lord. Seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all, all else, will it, it'll come. It'll happen. God will reveal his truth to you in the way that he has said that he would do it. Not in the way that you feel it ought to be done. Because we walk by faith and not by sight. But we have to do it. I mean, just do it. Our feelings have nothing to do with this. God's telling you to calm down and to trust him. And when we do that, we get hungry for him. We know that he, only he satisfies. Because the situations can be taken care of. They'll, they'll all pass away. And... It'll be either done by your hands or it'll be done by God's hands. You'll, you know, and you'll make it take longer by your own hands. But if you wait upon the Lord, he will renew your strength. He will make you able to stand through every storm. And he'll birth his word out of your mouth, your, the word of faith. And then I find out... Wow, am I ready to say that one yet? And then we find out that real faith isn't isn't us trying to work faith. Faith that we have comes by Jesus Christ. He being in us, it's his faith that we're operating in. We don't have to do nothing but believe him. We don't have to do anything but believe God. Believe that Jesus is the Son of God. Come after him and learn of him. Learn of him. My, remember what he says, my yoke is easy, my burden is light. He says, my yoke is easy, learn of me, my burden is light. You know, I have rest for your souls. I'm your contentment. You cannot live without the word of God. Jesus says, and in the Old Testament, it says it somewhere, that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of the Father. I remember being in such a situation where, and this is a longer time ago, about 10 years ago, I had no money, and I wanted to move, uh, no, we had to move. I was breaking up with a boyfriend, or, well, whatever that was. Anyway, <laughs> he moved into his place, and I was trying to get into another place. I asked somebody for help, and because my check would have came the next following month, and they said, okay, all right, but... What they didn't tell us is that there was drug dealers in the house, and they didn't move the drug dealer stuff out. And 
it was just a nasty situation. So I ended up standing outside this house saying, Lord, this is not what you promised me. This is not my this is not mine. This is not mine. And I just stood outside all day waiting for an answer from the Lord. I did not go back into the house. Our furniture was already moved in there. We moved overnight. And I remember just standing there and believing God. And another friend of mine, a pastor friend of mine, came by and he wanted to help us. And he just stood there. He said, I'm going to stand here with you. And he kept looking at me and said, I just don't know how you're doing it. Anybody else would be standing here crying and breaking up. And I said, why? God, God's made the promise. You know, he'll open a door. Something good is going to, something, a door is going to open. So I just stood there. But ten years later, I have to walk through all this silence and all these places that I, places that I don't want to be. Thinking that you're in freedom when you're not. And he's still saying, come after me. Well, this is the birthing process sometimes that all of us have to come through. I don't know what yours is in your heart. But it's a matter of trusting God. That he will do what he promised. That he knows the end and the beginning. But he doesn't always tell us the middle. He showed me the end, so I, I know how I end up. That's where I, I you know, there's nothing else to do. We have to, and I'm going to say it again. I, I know you get tired, you're probably tired of me saying, trust God. You, you, well, I, I am trusting God. But what about the hard times? What about the situations and the circumstances of life? Are you paying attention to them? And even though you're being quiet, have you cast your care before the Lord? First Peter, verse, uh, what, Chapter 5 says something like casting all your cares before him because he cares for you. He loves us. Oh, how I, I want to. So I, I'm working on forgetting about who I am just to remember who he is so he can remind me of who I am in him. Who am I in you, Lord? Show me who I am in you so that I can do all that you want me to do. So nothing else matters. I can't live by fear. I can't live by by uh, pride. And the devil's sneaky. He keeps sneaking these things in. And you forget. And then all of a sudden you're caught up in the cares of this life. And deceived all over again. Worrying about your son. Thinking about your daughter. You're looking at your husband and snaring your, your lip. You know? You, or you're looking at your wife and saying, oh, gee, here we go again. <laughs> God's love isn't operating like that. And God's word isn't operating like that. God's love sees, sees that person and what he has created and what he wants that to be. And that's what we have to see. And it's sometimes hard because the devil is constantly, you know, hitting them and they're not warding it off and they're, you know, or they just don't even know how to ward it off. But you don't always, not always able to see because their flesh is screaming at you. But that's why we continually seek the Lord while he may be found and find our strength in him. And he builds our faith by his word every day. Back to this verse here. Verse 6. It says, this makes you very happy even though now, for a short time, different kinds of troubles may make you sad. These troubles come to prove that your faith is pure. This purity of faith is worth more than gold, which can be proved to be pure by fire, but will ruin. Talking about the gold. But the purity of your faith will bring you praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is shown to you. You have not seen Christ, but you still love him. You cannot see him now, but you believe in him. So you are filled with a joy that cannot be explained. Now, you should feel that. I, my expectation is of God. So I expect that my heart should feel that. No matter the situation or the circumstance, my heart should feel the joy of the Lord. My strength is in Him. <laughs> Praise Him. 
You cannot see him right now, but you believe him. So you so you are filled with a joy that cannot be explained, a joy full of glory. And you are receiving the goal of your faith, the salvation of your souls. And this is a promise from God. Just be still and know that he is who he says he is. I don't mean just be still and don't read. Don't be still and don't study. Yeah. Study to show yourself approved of God. A workman that need not be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth in your life. Your living life. every Your personal life. See, your personal life will show up in your, your, your speech before men. Glorify God with your body. Oh, let's go over here. <laughs> That's what that isn't that what it says to glorify God with your body honor him you see you pour out your heart before him you you confess and you cast all these troubles all these anxieties onto the Lord because he cares for you he who suffered in the flesh for you took care of all the fears and anxieties that this life will bring you and has the answer he says peace I've got the answer for the situation Chapter 2, 1 Peter. So then rid yourselves of all evil, lying, hypocrisy, jealousy, evil speech. As newborn babes want milk, you should want the pure and simple teaching. By it you can grow up and be saved because you have already examined and seen how good the Lord is. When you walk with this word every single day, of your life I don't care I, I understand we don't want it to take so long but it does sometimes sometimes because of what's going on wh how we are walking in faith you got to be fearless and not turn your head from the left or to the right but always looking at Jesus the author of our faith always looking to him you know it <laughs> it seems hard to do, but nothing's impossible with God. We have to sit down daily in the word of truth, eating and drinking. I'm telling you, the reason that that other story that I told you, the reason that I was able to stand in front of that house all day long, and I'm talking all day, it was uh, almost dark, you know, before somebody came through and said, we got a place for you. You know, we, we have, we, you can come stay with us. The reason that I was able to stand that long is because I was constantly, before that situation, I was constantly feeding myself with the word of truth. That's All I know is that it was God and Him alone. It was Jesus, the Father, and the Holy Spirit, and that's all I wanted. I didn't want anything else. I didn't want to know anything else. I threw, threw out most tapes and videos, all music, <laughs> my Boston albums. Oh my goodness. I threw most of those things out. <laughs> I, well, I threw all of my records since Earth, Wind of Fire, all that stuff that I had went out, burned up in the fire. I purified my house. And I only wanted the Lord. I, I don't know how to explain to you how there just isn't anything else more important than who He is and that He is your all in all. I, maybe I do know how to explain it to you. Just say it. It is the truth. Most everything else that's not like God frustrates me. When people try to use their knowledge on me as if they will exist forever. <laughs> and as if they are some type of God to me. It makes me angry. Now if they want to waste their own life, that's, you know, go ahead. I, as long as I've said the truth and, and they know who I am, that's on them now. But, as, but and I don't mean to toss anybody away. But people have a way of pressing on you with their ideas and their ways. They're always casting their flesh to you. Trying to make you eat it. And I don't want them. They're not my daily bread. They don't live forever. and They, ne they will not live forever in heaven. Only God has the power to cast our souls into hell. And I'm not going there. I want to eat Jesus. I want to drink Jesus. The simple 
milk of the word. As newborn babes want milk, you should want the pure and simple teaching. This is your heart. Understanding that this living word, this light, is the light that lit the world. <laughs> this is the light that comes into man and causes him to know who God is and understand who he is and why you're on this planet. What is expected of me here? Well, from what I found out, it is to trust God, love God, worship God, and follow him. Follow him. Worship him. Love him. Trust him. Head over heels in love with Jesus Christ. Head over heels in love with the Father of heaven and earth. And there isn't anything else that's more important than that. Nothing. What else can I say? God is faithful to do what he has promised. Yet he has given us authority through his son Jesus Christ to take down every stronghold, everything that rises up against the knowledge of God. But we must seek God first. Yet trouble comes. Job had trouble. You know, I, I, I thought it was funny that um, <laughs> I, I had heard somebody say that Job had sinned. Job, they uh, said, well, because Job was, you know, concerned about his kids, that's what, you know, caused him to have to go through that affliction. But no, no, we're all concerned about our kids. Job made a sacrifice for his children at the altar. You know, he blessed his children. He, he, he repented for his own kids. That's how much he had awe for God. He asked the Lord to, you know, take care of them and, and help them to come into their the righteousness of God. Be right with God. I can imagine the things that Job said for his, on his children's behalf that he, they would be drawn to the Lord. Yeah. What happened to Job is what happens to most people who want God and only want God, who want to live in righteousness and eschew, as they said about Job, eschew evil. He shunned evil. Then like it. So why is this happening to me? Well, anyway, they, they, they put down Job and they say, well, he did this. Because he did this, this is why God allows it. No. Job was a good man. It, that's what the Bible says. God didn't doesn't lie. He doesn't differ from his word in that area. You trust God. And it says, because I was reading in um, Isaiah 55, or is it 54? I believe it's Isaiah chapter 54. Yeah. In verse 15, it says, Behold, they shall surely gather together, but not by me. Whosoever shall gather together against you shall fall for your sake, for thy sake. Behold, I have created the smith and the blower that blows, that, that blows the coals in the fire and brings forth an instrument of, for his work. And I have created the waster to destroy and then the Lord says, No weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue that shall rise against you in judgment, thou shalt condemn. That means you will, shall condemn it. This is the heritage, the inheritance of the servants of the Lord. And their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. God, God's got you. But you have to look into this word and trust what he said. Drink it and eat it so you get that understanding in your heart. You are growing from grace to grace, from glory to glory, grace to grace. I don't know why I keep saying that, but from glory to glory every single day. His mercy is new every single day. You are washed. You are cleansed. Listen to what else it says in, in, in 1 Peter chapter 2. Chapter 2, verse... Uh, Let's say verse 2. As newborn babes want milk, you should want the pure and simple teaching. By it, you can grow up and be saved. 
this is why that word was so important to me while I was standing out in front of that house so long, that many hours. You know, I, I would take index cards and I would write the word on them and I meditate on the word day and night. If I was walking down the street, I meditated on the word. If I was home, I, walking around the kitchen, wherever I was, whatever I was doing, I would stop and look at the word. Yeah, I believe in Deuteronomy 6, 6, chapter 6, verses 5 through 9. You look at that and it says that the word shall not depart from you. It's like you're supposed to have the word in front of your eyes at all times. The word on your fingers. The word in wherever I can look. I need to see that word. Because I want what God said rooted and grounded in me. When I say he's my daily bread, I mean that he, there isn't anything else. He has, it has to be like this. The devil doesn't, the devil does not care about you. He's going to pelt you with everything he's got. He's going to keep on beating on you and beating on you and beating on you until he beats down your house. But the weapons of my warfare, mine, are not carnal but mighty through God to the pulling down of every stronghold. He has no power over me because I belong to God. I belong to God. I'm in him and he is in me. I desire him. And this is how our life must be. We must desire the sincere, the, the true, the, the natural milk of the word. And we will grow up by it. We'll grow up by the word of truth. And this is why I get the word in your face. I was thinking about it yesterday. As I leaned against the wall, I, I just thought about it, how our faith really is and how we keep trying to work something that we already have. All we have to do is eat and drink this word of truth. Well, I don't have time for all of that. But that's why I had made it so simple for myself that all I had to do was pick it up here and there. I wrote it on, on, on pieces of paper and stuck it here or there. I am telling you, I would take the word and stick it in my pocket just to remember who he is. But people, I, I'm telling you, I've seen it so many times. We walk out the door and we forget who we are. We forget that we are kingdom citizens and we're in, we're like, we're like a, a you stick up your index finger, and we're that one person surrounded by the world, and all of these distractions are running all around you, trying to deceive you from the knowledge of God. And I don't mean that people are doing it on purpose, but the devil is. He's going to keep operating. He has his doctrine set. And he uses people. The word of truth... <laughs> is something that that we want all of the time and and sometimes there are emergencies we need to pull it out of our pocket and look at that word <laughs> people don't believe me you think that you can just read the the bible and walk out and and just not be affected by the world and i and i you know you get to that point where you aren't affected anymore but does it always have to take a situation for us not to be moved. Why don't we build up now in our hearts the word of truth? Seek God's kingdom. Get an understanding of his word. Not because another man has to teach me all the time. But because I desire him. I desire him. When I desire Jesus Christ. Then he'll take my righteousness and turn it around as the noonday. He'll cause these things that I need to happen. I mean, desires of my heart. Uh, I'm going back and forth from one Bible to the next one. Just so you know, I love my King James. But Psalm, with, with, with Psalm 37, I think it is. Yep. It, it's one of my... It's one of my favorites. I guess I have a lot of favorites, don't I? But it says in verse 5, no, it says, let's start in verse 3. Trust in the Lord and do good. So shalt thou find, so shalt thou dwell in the land, and truly you will be fed. Delight yourself also in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. 
Commit your way unto the Lord. Trust in also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. And he, that is the Lord, he shall bring forth your righteousness as the light, as the light, and thy judgment as the noonday. He, he has nothing but good in mind for you. But we can't trust in our own strength. We trust in the strength of the Lord. And the Lord's strength is in his word. Our strength, we are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. Our strength comes from Jesus Christ. He has the, our, the victory that overcomes the world. Jesus overcame the world. And our victory is through faith in God. Believing, trusting, resting, and relying on what God said. Who he is. Um, oh, I wish, I pray that you get it. Because there's no way that I can manually make you understand the desire that should be in your heart towards who he is. You desire him and you begin to delight in him because you trust him. And he manifests all those other things. And I, and I still hear, well, I, I live in this country where things are constantly not right. God will give you the peace to get through these things and not just get through them and pass them, but others will be added into the faith. And don't be troubled. We have an eternal life. This body is just an earth suit and we are going to heaven. I would say, and not and we're not just staying in heaven, but there's there's so much more beyond this life, beyond this flesh. Those who have left and perished out of this flesh aren't wrestling with these, with these situations and circumstances anymore. They don't have to live in fear anymore. Those who believed in the Lord are with him. They're with him. God has, wherever we are born, wherever we live, God has already known that. He put you where you are. So therefore, he's given you the grace to live it. He's given you what you need to do it. Job had the, the grace to deal with it. And he might not have said all the right things that we think he would have said, but I think that we would have said some of the same things ourselves. But then he had to repent. He repented and told the Lord he is sorry for the things, the foolish things that came out of his mouth. These tests, these trials, these troubles that come, they come to purify our faith. So that we would be, our faith would be more. Don't let whatever is going on tell you that God is not who he says he is because he won't do what you want him to do right now. But take your, your shoulder and press into the kingdom of God. Use all of your might to press into the kingdom of God. For the kingdom of God suffers violence, and the violent take the kingdom of God by force. That's in my own words. The violent take the violence that is coming against them. They don't wrestle with the principality and power. But we speak the word of truth. You Desire God and God's way of being, his way of living. So you got to fight to enter in, but yet it's the easiest thing you've ever done. Though it doesn't feel like it, I'm telling you. It is like the easiest thing you've ever done once you know what is up against you. It's not the situation. It is principalities and powers. It is wickedness in high places trying to distract you from proclaiming, from, from opening your mouth in the word of truth. God has a word that he wants to speak to put angels in the mood, to bring action to your life that would, that would glorify his name in the earth and in the heaven. But we have to seek him while he may be found. We have to call upon him while he is near and confess what he has said. Stand in it and believe.
All we have to desire the, the word of truth as babies desire milk from their mothers. And when we do this, we will grow up. <laughs> we will grow up and be saved. Because you have already examined and seen how good the Lord is. Isn't God good? He is sufficient for all your needs. And because you've walked through it and you've seen the things that he's done, you're excited about who he is and where we're going. It says in verse 4, Come to the Lord Jesus Christ, the stone that lives. The people of the world did not want this stone. But he was the stone God chose, and he was precious. You also are like living stones, so let yourselves be used to build a spiritual temple, to be holy priests who offer spiritual sacrifices to God. All, you know, when you speak the word of truth, you're offering a spiritual sacrifice before God. I, I, I found that to be awesome. After I came out of prayer and I read these things, God's word, the only sacrifice. Isn't that amazing? God's word, the only sacrifice, the only thing that God hears is Jesus Christ, his word. The only thing that God sees when he sees you is his word. Well, I'm not saying that he doesn't see the situations and circumstances around you, but if you want a Lord who will respond, give him what he gave you. Give him what he gave you. He gave you his son. Give him his son. He's, you are born again. You are a holy nation, a peculiar people, a royal priesthood. God, by his son Jesus, has clothed you, re-robed you, washed you with his blood. Made you a holy nation unto God. This God who is able to come inside of us and take one nation out of another nation. And he does it because he loves us. And he doesn't even take our choices away from us, but gives us the choice to come sit with him and to love with him. To let go of the old nature and to take hold of his nature. And I'm excited I am excited for this good thing that God has done. This good news that he is able to come in here and take out this, this heart of mine and give me a new heart to put his spirit in me. Uh, his spirit in me will keep me holy, reminding me of the word of truth. I am sanctified in God and in Christ. And I live not because of of my will and my want. I mean, yeah, my desire is of him, but he made me desire him by his goodness, by his love towards me. He has given me everything that I could ever need by loving me. No one in this life can love me, can hold me, can talk to me, can touch me the way that he has done it. And I don't think that there's a person on this life, in this world, that doesn't want a relationship. Not one, you want one like this. Security. Praise the Lord. God's goodness and mercy endures for for the saints of God, for those who love him. He'll do everything, everything, everything that his word has promised he would do. <laughs> he is the most high God. Let me finish up the scripture so we can go. Starting again in verse 4, come to the Lord Jesus, 
the stone that lives, that people, the people of the world did not want the stone, but he was the, the stone God chose and was precious. You also are like living stones, so let yourselves be used to build a spiritual temple, to be a holy priest, to be holy priest who offers spiritual sacrifices to God. He will accept those sacrifices through Jesus Christ. Did you, you, you heard me. He will not accept those sacrifices through your flesh, but through the flesh of Jesus Christ. That's crucified flesh. That is a flesh that has been mortified, that has been killed by the spirit of truth, because there's no way for you to do this. You have to obey what the Spirit is telling you. You have to listen for the Holy Spirit. What is that? Romans chapter 8, verse 13, 14, somewhere around there. That we mortify the deeds of the flesh by the Spirit of God. There isn't any other way. So you have to be still and listen. Hear, seek, ask, seek, knock. And the Holy Spirit is given to you as you ask. God will give you His Holy Spirit and you will be filled with the knowledge of God. You'll keep coming continually to drink from this well of life. <sighs> he will accept those sacrifices through Jesus Christ. The scripture says, I will put a stone in the ground in Jerusalem. Everything will be built on this important and precious rock. Anyone who trusts in him will never be disappointed. This stone is worth much to you who believe. But to the people who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. Also, he is a stone that causes people to stumble, a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they do not obey what God says, which is what God planned to happen to them. I want to say, while it is day, no matter how many times you've fallen, no matter how far you've fallen, God is for you and not against you. And He wants to get you up. But you have to let Him get you up. <laughs> you have to let Him get you up. Let Him come into your heart today and, and speak His words. Let Him make you new. You are new because you received the Son. You believe what God said about Himself and about His Son, about His Holy Spirit being in us, that He's making you, and all you have to do is trust Him. Back to the Word. Verse 9. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for God's own possession. You don't belong to yourself. You were chosen to tell about the wonderful acts of God, who called you out of darkness and called you out of darkness into the wonderful light. Did you hear that? At one time you were not a people, but now you are God's people. In the past you had never received mercy, but now you have received God's mercy. It is finished. Trust the Lord. Look for Him while He may be found. Call upon Him while He is near. And He will restore you. He will make you what you were meant to be. When you look to Him. This is Pastor Cheryl Jackson coming to you with the word of the Lord. God is good. And I pray that your day is blessed. That you get gathered strength from these words today. Be blessed. Get the word in your face. Thank you.